Sima, in last class we have uh, calculated the S matrix for uh, H plane, um, E plane, as well as for magic plane. And in today's class, uh, we are going to study about the uh, scattering matrix calculation for directional coupler, as well as circulator, isolator, and the gyrator. So moving on to the scattering matrix calculation for directional coupler. Before we move on to its calculation, uh, let me just brief you what exactly the directional coupler is. Uh, so directional coupler, it is basically a four port device. You can observe this port one, port two, port three, and port four. And this directional coupler, it is used to calculate the instant power, reflected power, backward power, as well as the forwarded power. So basically for the calculations related to the power, but how much amount of power that has been uh, associated with the microwave signal and how much is being received and how much is being forwarded. So the entire relation related to the transfer of power from one port to another port that could be known through the directional coupler. So coming, moving on to the uh, properties of the directional coupler. So here the main thing that you need to remember is that let us assume that the power is transmitting from port one. Assume that power is transmitting from port one and it has to move on to port two. It should travel from port one and it should move on to port two. And in real scenario, uh, there can be a situation that not 100% of amount can reach to the destination because of XYZ reasons like uh, losses can be there. Okay, so while it is traveling from port one to port two, whatever the instant power that has been traveling from port one to port two is some amount of that particular energy that can be transferred to port four, but not to the port three. I'm repeating it once again. When power is transmitting from port one to port two, if there occurs any losses, then those losses should be associated only with the port four. Only some amount of its energy, uh, if it has to associate, then that should associate only with the port four because port four is in parallel with port two. Its destination is port two and that port that is parallel to the destination port is port one, port four. So that power should uh, completely transfer either to the port 2 or if it has to associate with any other port then that port should be port 4 only but not the port 3 that is the property number one and coming to the uh, second property assume that power is transmitting from port 2 to port 1 power is transmitting from 2 to 1 so now in this case 2 is the source port and 1 is the destination port. So the port parallel to the destination port is port 3. So in this scenario, when power is transmitting from port 2 to port 1, then the power should be associated only with the port 3 but not with the port 4. Okay, and third property is that power is transmitting from port 3 to port 4. That means port 3 is the source one and port 4 is the destination port. And in this scenario, to the destination port, the parallel port is nothing but second port. So now when power is transmitting from port 3 to port 4, some of the power can be associated with port 2, but not to the port 1. And the last property that is nothing but fourth one, assume that power is being transmitting from port 4 to port 3. It is transmitting from 4 to 3. So here 4 will become the source one and uh, 3 is going to be the destination port. Now in this case, to the destination port, port 1 is in parallel. So the power transmitting from port 4 to port 3, if some, some of its energy has to be associated, then that energy must be associated only with the port 1, but not to the port 3. Because whatever the port that is parallel to the destination, here I have explained four properties in each property. Uh, the assumption that we made is that uh, in first property, port 1 is the source port and in second, port 2 is the source and in third property, port 3 is the source and in fourth property, port, four, four, sorry, port 4 is the source. So while we are writing the properties, we need to remember in this manner that to the destination, whatever the port is in parallel to the destination port, whichever the port is in parallel with that particular port only some amount of leakage power needs to be associated, but not with the rest of the port. So those are the properties. We can have a uh, quick look over here. A portion of power traveling from port 1 to port 2 should be coupled to port 4 but not to port 3 because port 4 is in parallel to port 2. You can observe that in the diagram. And second one, portion of power traveling from port 2 to port 1 when it is traveling.
starting from 2 to 1. Uh, 1 will be the destination port, 2 to the 1, 3 will be parallel. So, some portion of power should be associated with port 3, but not to the port 4. So, similarly, the remaining two properties were also uh, derived. So, now based on those properties, now we need to derive the properties of S matrix related to the directional coupler. As directional coupler is a 4 port network, a uh, uh, scattering matrix will be of order 4 by 4. 16 coefficients will be there. Okay. And second property is that uh, in directional coupler, all the ports are perfectly matched. Of course, they are going to be matched. So, S11, S22, S33, and S44, they are going to be 0. And we have symmetric property that is nothing but Sij is equals to Sj. So here we are going to have so many number of combinations like, like S12 will be equals to S21. Similarly, S13 will be equals to S31. Similarly, S14 will be equals to S41. So you can see that S12 is equals to S21. Next, S13, take this one. S13 will be equals to S31. S14 will be equals to S41. And next, S23 will be equals to S32. And S24 will be equals to to S42 and next S34 is equals to S43. So based on symmetry property in this particular directional coupler, we are going to have these many symmetrical relations among the coefficients of the S matrix. Okay. And the fourth property is that there is no coupling between port 1 and port 3, port 2 and port 4. No coupling occurs between one port 1, port 3 and the second combination is that port 2 and port 4. Why it is not being coupled, you can observe that. He is saying that port 1 and port 3, they don't have coupling as well as port 2 and port 4 also, they don't have coupling. Because if it is transferring from this, uh, if from port 1, if the power is transferring, then it will be associated with port 2 and port 4. It should move on to port 2 or it should move on to port 4. It should not come back to the port 3. That is the reason why port 1 and port 3 are said to be not coupled. In the same manner, when power is transmitting from port 2, it, the destination should be port 1 and if power needs to be associated, then that needs to be associated with 3. So in this case, port 2 will be coupled with port 1 and port 3, but will not with the port 4. So because of that reason, port 1, port 3 are said to be not coupled and another combination that is said to be not coupled is port 2 and port 4. So in that scenario, S13 is equals to S31 is equals to 0. See, 1 and 3. 1 and 3 are not coupled. So the suffixes, the parameter which is having the suffixes, both the suffixes 1, 3, like S13 as well as S31, they will become 0. And similarly, 2 and 4 also not match i mean not coupled that means suffixes which involves both that is nothing but s24 as well as s42 both are going to be zero this is about the fourth property so now uh, we have we can replace these things from the symmetry proper property and you you can replace these four parameters with zero so now uh, let us uh, reduce the uh, for 16 i mean 4 by 4 matrix with its values so we have represented the values, okay? And now from the fifth property, what is the fifth property? S matrix, when multiplied with its complex conjugate, then we are going to get unit matrix or the identity matrix. So we'll be writing this and the complements. And of course, while writing the I matrix, the diagonal elements from in this, he, he see, we have this diagonal and this diagonal. This diagonal element should be ones and the remaining should be zeros. So now, R1, C1, R2, C2, R3, C3, R4, C4, at the same time, R1 and C3. Okay, so now just how I, just how, how we have calculated for the remaining the same thing, R1, C1, R2, C2, R3, C3, R4, C4, and again, R1 and C3. We will be co concentrating only on these combinations. The remaining combinations also occurs, but we concentrate only on this for the simplification purpose and from the we have a property that a into a complement is equals to magnitude of a square so from that here s12 into s12 magnitude here we have for two parameters with the same suffix so that can be replaced with a single parameter with single suffix like this so so that can become magnitude of s12 whole square this will be magnitude of s14 whole square similarly magnitude of s12 whole square magnitude of s23 whole Square. Just this equation is being turned like this by the application of 
uh, that particular property called a into a complement is equals to magnitude of a square. So from that particular formula or the property, uh, we just represent all these equations in this manner. Okay, and now we'll start uh, calculating these coefficients like S1 to S2 and all. So now equating equation seven and eight, because their RHS is equal, so we are going to equate the 7 and 8. So what is common in 7 and 8? Uh, here we have S12, S12. So these two are going to get cancelled. Then magnitude of S14 is equals to magnitude of S23 whole square. See, that's what we got. Magnitude of S14 is equals to magnitude of S23. So square squares gets cancelled. Then S14 will be equal to S13. And in a similar way, we can equate 8 and 9 also. See, we can equate, we have equated 7, 8. So now we can equate 8 and 9. In 8 and 9, let us see what are the uh, common terms. Uh, here S12 is there. Here S12 is not there. Okay, leave it. S23 is there. S23. Yeah. Here S23 and this S23, they are going to uh, cancel. Okay, then what will be left over with? Will be left over with magnitude of S12 whole square is equals to magnitude of S34 whole square. Magnitude of S12 whole square is equals to magnitude of S34 whole square. So here we are going to have S12 is equals to S34. So now from equation 11, what is the equation number 11? This is the equation number 11. Okay. See, this is what we have S12 into S23. Uh, star is nothing but here complex. It indicates complex and S14 into S34 star is equals to zero. So now here we are going to have some assumption. What is that assumption? Let us assume that S12 is real and positive. S12 is real and positive. So we are considering uh, in place of S12, we are assuming one particular value called P. Okay, and S12 is equals to P and S12 is also going to be S34 from this particular formula because S12 is equals to S34. So when you are equating S12 to P, then S34 is also going to be P only. Okay, so from that we got this particular equation. So from equation number 14. So from equation number 14, uh, we can take, see here we have S12 and we have S34 star. We have S12 and S34 star. So when you replace these two with P and by taking P as a common, then we'll be left over with only these two. S23 star plus S14 is equals to zero and P cannot be equated to zero. Then what will be equated to zero? S23 star is equals to S1. 4 s23 star is equals to s14 but what is s14 value s14 value is s23 so from this s23 star is equals to minus of s23 s23 star is equals to minus of s23 as here we have uh, assumed a real and positive now we are assuming the imaginary value for s23 for s12 we have assumed a real and positive and for s23 we are uh, imagining the imaginary value called jq so if s23 is equals to jq then s23 star will be minus jq because s23 is equals to minus of s23 so s23 star is going to be minus jq so here we can come to one conclusion that s23 is equals to s14 from equation number 12 and that can be equated to jq so now we'll be substituting all these so let us substitute equation number 15 like this value as well as equation number 16 in equation number 7. What is the equation number 7? S12 magnitude of S12 whole square plus magnitude of S14 whole square is equals to 1. So in place of S12 whole square, we need to substitute P. And in place of S14 whole square, we need to substitute JQ. Okay, so P square, magnitude of P square plus magnitude of JQ whole square is equals to 1, P square. And of course, we know that J square value will be minus 1. So P square magnitude of minus Q square, we are going to have any magnitude of a negative thing or will result you a positive only. So you can conclude that P square plus Q square is equals to 1. And next. So now we will substitute all these values in equation 5. What is the equation for that is nothing but S matrix only because here we got all the values, right? Here we have what is S23 and we, ha we have uh, assumed what is S12. So and after substitution and we have these values like S is equals to this thing. Okay, so now we have a relation like B is equals to S into A magnitude of sorry matrix of B is equals to multiplication of S matrix with A here as I told you in previous class A is nothing but the input and B is going to be the output for the particular 
ports. OK, so here B1 will be equals to multiplying this column with this row. So what we are going to have B1 is equals to P into A2 plus C, P into 0 into A1 will be 0, P into A2. And again, we are going to have 0 plus JQ into A4. So B1 is equals to P A2 plus JQ4. Similarly, what could be B2? P A1. This will be 0 plus uh, JQ into A3. So P into A1 plus JQ into A3. So in that manner, you can calculate uh, B3 and B4 also. And now we are going to uh, get the values for B1 uh, with some analysis. And in case one, we are assuming that A2 is equals to A3 is equals to A4 is equals to 0. That means uh, inputs to port 2, port 3 and port 4. Input for port 2, port 3 and port 4 is 0. And the input is connected only to A1. Input is connected only to A1 and to the remaining ports it is not connected. So with this assumption like replacing A1, A2, A4 to 0 will replace A2, A3, A4 to 0 and we will try to get what will be the B1, B2, B3 and B4 values. After substituting this uh, we got B1 as 0 and B2 as P into A1 and B3 as 0 and B4 as JQ into A1. So these are the B1, B3 values, we want 0. And for B2 and B4, it is a non-zero for this condition. Similarly, in case 2, what we are doing? In case 2, in case 1, A1 is provided with input. So in case 2, A2 is provided with input. We'll substitute and we'll be getting the B1, B2, B3, B4 values. And in case 3, we are providing input to A3. And in case 4, we are providing input to A4 by assuming that no ports are connected to the input. So with these four cases, like in each case, we are, you are connecting your input to one port and you're making the another ports to not to receive the input. So with those assumptions, you are getting the B1, B2, B3, B4 values. In each case, you are, will, you will be getting different, different values. So this is what all about the uh, S matrix calculation for directional coupler. Than one line. And that's me, Chad, and you need to say clear.